Kaketsu is at the ending stages of its pre-production phase and it's about to go into its production phase. I did not think that we were going to get this far because I didn't think anybody in their right mind would greenlight a film that doesn't take place in the 21st century. Because it takes place in the 1800s, we have to do a lot of research and we have to do research into like, okay, so what costuming would they wear at that time? What, what is the uniform and stuff like that? So there's a lot of research going into like, okay, so how much is this actually going to cost? And at the end of the day, we came down to a budget of 5,000. We needed to have a plan before we even started fundraising about what is 100% necessary in the budget, but then also having a few lower um, numbers. So if we weren't able to reach our goal, we can make some compromises and make the movie on this lower budget. So as long as like we hit a certain number, the movie can still be made. The locations in the script are a desert, which is where our big climactic final showdown between the samurai and the cowboy takes place. Then we have a Japanese garden, which is gonna be like where the whole catalyst of the story takes place. We were really hoping to get this really beautiful uh, Japanese garden that's in Balboa Park. Uh, and we went there one day, we, we scouted it, and we were like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what we want. And they're like, yeah. Fine, yeah, that'll be $800 an hour. I'm like, okay, never mind, because for an eight hour shoot day, that's definitely uh, a little pricey. We had to pivot a little bit. I found a new location and I made it work, so I'm happy about that. Intercut in between all those scenes is in the Minka, which is this traditional Japanese hut. I was kind of trepidatious of even that location at all, because, you know, when you think traditional Japanese house, you're thinking, okay, well, that's obviously in Japan, you know? And doing upon further research in Southern California, it was like, okay, there are places that we can shoot, but it's not definite. And we looked at the script and what we actually needed, you know? Okay, so what does the script require for the scene? And it wasn't much. And I went up to him and I said, wait, what if uh, we build one of those sets instead of finding it? I would have Joe Cusick send me some photos of some Inca houses, what uh, he wanted it to look like, and then I would in turn take those, drop some mock-up designs, and by week 12 I had a full blueprint of what we were going to make and a design for it. I was very much involved in the design process of the Minka. I have expected somebody to take a 3D model and say like, okay, so this is what I want to build and stuff like that, which is what you would expect. No, he used my drawings as a reference for how he was going to build it because he's like, no, this is what Joe's going to want and this is how I can do it the most cost-effective way. I started off with a piece of quarter-inch Luan and I cut that up into a bunch of panels to give it that wood plank feeling. I did a wood stain and finish on one, and then on the other one I just did a, a nice stain. None of them gave me the look that I really, really wanted, which was this aged look of wood. I went out and bought a blowtorch. Once I started using the blowtorch, I finally started getting the looks that I wanted. It didn't seem like a pattern this time anymore. It seemed more like an actual just burned piece of wood that was aged really well. So then came to the Shoji screen doors. I wanted to find a good material that would diffuse light, but also give that realistic look of the shoji doors. I had to do a bunch of research, found some paper that is used in Japanese calligraphy, and I ended up purchasing a few rolls of that, and that's the material we used. When it comes to authenticity, number one, you ought to be true to the story that you're telling. Going to the actors, that was by far the toughest part, because you're casting not just for the role of being authentic, but also casting for the film. You have a kind of a picture in your mind of what they're going to look like, but you don't know for sure. And the reason why it's so exciting is because you're bringing on performers. You're trying to find these three main actors, so the, the cowboy, the samurai, and the master, it was based off of look. But when it came time to the samurai, that was way more serious because it was more emotional. And he only says like five lines in the entire film. He's very much a more like monotone character who doesn't speak much, you know? So how do you cast that? You know, how do you cast somebody who's able to have a presence? And the actor that we got, absolutely brilliant. He got the parts, not just because he looked it, but because he portrayed everything about this character that I wanted. I very much have been like fostering this very specific vision throughout the entire film. So now it's that time of like, okay, I have to relate my vision to other people. I have to be able to find a team of people who are willing to help me make this movie. That is what the filmmaking process is. It's collaboration. I hired Gabe because I trust him. So the fact that I'm able to let go of certain things is very much a big weight off my shoulders because it's one less thing I have to worry about. And that's the same thing when it comes to everybody. If I wanted to have a sheer authorship over the entire movie, I would have every single job on set. One of the most important things in a producer-director relationship is that trust. There are times where we'd be talking about things and Joe will tell me something he wants and then I will tell him what my opinion on that is as a producer, mainly thinking logistically, and I say, hey, 
I don't, I don't think we can achieve that. It's complete understanding. This film has been an uphill battle since day one. And the fact that we are halfway up the hill and about to be over the hill is a testament to the people that we got on the project. You have to have multiple plans. You can't just have a plan A. Plan A is never gonna go right because the film is never gonna look exactly how you want. And so you have to be able to pivot. You have to be able to roll with the punches and be able to look at a brick wall and be able to just push through it. Because so many people, they'll hit a stop and they'll say, oh no, I can't do this. You know, like, it's too much. And I felt like that. Making a film is tiring. But the fact that we're there, yes, I'm willing to pivot. Because this movie means so much to me, not just to me, but to the cast and crew that have already worked so hard on this movie. So by the end of the day, we will have made a movie. I'm just ready to see this thing get started.